Hey guys, this is Hell Hades. This is going to be another Raid Shadow Legends video. Um, this is going to be a really interesting video. So the changes that came in 1.14, Leech was one of those changes where we moved a buff from a 10% lifesteal gain from Leech to 18%. And it has significant improvements to the game. Um, I'm going to show you how Leech has now been able to change the meta again. Uh, for clan boss and i think we can now use leech as our lifesteal instead of the lifesteal gear what does that mean it means you can run champions in any gear you want and trust me in this it means you can dramatically improve your damage like absolutely move from a good level to an insane level because you don't need to have all of the requirements of lifesteal if you imagine you change everybody from lifesteal gear into speed gear You've just gained about 24 speed per champion just in that one move. Same sort of thing in terms of thinking, in terms of all of a sudden you can use different gear sets like Savage. You can use things like um, Immortal sets. You can use things like, what's the other one that I can't remember the name of and I'm trying to as I speak, Stalwart set. So you can use different gear sets to absolutely change up the meta. Really cool. It also means that speed teams become way more viable. So I'm really excited about this. What I'm going to show you in this video is a team which is kind of, um, I guess, more ordinary. So a bunch of rares, that type of thing, taking on Brutal. I'm then going to show you a team which got my personal best live on Twitch last night, um, which was a manual run. And then I'm going to show you a team which is a better auto team for me than my manual run because it's got more consistency and means I'll be able to two key Ultra Nightmare all day long, every day. So let's get into this then. So let, let's just discuss the type of champions. Um, I'm just gonna pull up a site here for you guys to see. There's two sites actually you could use. I use Love a lot. I've shown it to you guys before. You can go into ayumilove.net, look down the right hand side here, and it, this site is really great for just telling you champions that have got different abilities. You can go into debuff leech and it's going to tell you all of the champions that have got leech in the game. So all of a sudden, people like Corpse Collector could be interesting. Knight Errant could be interesting. Seneschal could be interesting because they all apply the leech debuff. Um, so Seneschal actually could be quite a cool champion now. Defense-based, you know, his, his ability to come into clan boss might have just skyrocketed. Leech on his A1, continuous heal on his A2, and he puts a counter attack on himself on his A3. All of a sudden he feels pretty decent. Because um, he brings not just personal synergy now. He brings team synergy. I think he could actually be a top rated epic for clan boss before long at all. Um, providing this testing makes makes what I'm saying makes sense. So we've also got... Um, we've got Foley in there. Anifui, Yannicka. Yannicka could be good. Foley could be good. I'd be surprised if we make a Nifu into a clan boss champion, but you never know. Uh, and there's also Teela Gourmain, and there is... It's not actually showing an update here, because the champion I'm doing this with is Mashald, who's had his abilities changed. He's not showing in this list for some reason, but he's definitely got it. So maybe this needs a bit of an update. The other site that I would use or recommend would be Raid Codex. There's a very similar thing. You can go into Buffs, Debuffs. You can click on Leech. And then see here, these are all the champions that have got it. So actually, we have got Michelle here. Again, these need to be updated in terms of the quality of the champion based on the new buffs. So does my tier list. We're all behind it because we're all trying to find our feet in terms of what does it mean. Okay, so let's jump into a clan boss fight. I'm going to go with my kind of rare team. Um, but I'm going to use Michelle still because I need that leech debuff on. So we're going to have Michelle in there. We're going to have, and he's going to be my speed up. We're going to go with uh, Relic Pretender, Frozen Banshee. I just need to change some gear around a bit. Okay, well, yeah, I'm just going to get some rares together. I'll pull the team up and then you can see it. Right, okay, so I've got a team. We're going to run ourselves on Brutal with Leech. So I'm going to be running with Mush uh, Catacomb Counselor as a ally attacker, yeah? So I've got him in Stalwart gear and I've got him in one set Immortal. Um, I've tried to go ease off on the crazy gear, guys. I've got good gear. I don't keep a load of four-star stuff lay, like laying around. But I've made sure that if I put anything six-star, I've only le leveled it to 12. 
if it's five um, five stars, some of it is leveled full all the way. But I tried to make sure the stats aren't too insane. Um, Frozen Banshee, same sort of thing again. Some level eight, some level twelves, yeah. But we've done speed and some defense set on her. Coffin Smasher, I've gone for speed sets and um, accuracy. So we've got in these champions, poison, decrease attack. We then got marked for decreased defense. Same sort of thing. Kind of good gear, but not crazy gear. So that's one, two, three. Uh, Katoom Counselor, four. And then Mashald is going to be my poisoner. He is in insane gear because he's also going to be in my main team. So I'm not going to change all this up. I'm not going to waste millions of silver here. But he's in stalwart gear. Uh, he's fast, 240 odd speed, and good accuracy. So he needs to land that leech. So we're going to get into a brutal run so you can just see how well this level of team are able to sustain against a clan boss. So let's get these boys and girls into the, the right order. We're going to have um, marked in as... Uh, do I even have a natural lead? I don't know if I do. It might end up being Michelle. One, two... That's marked there. Uh, what's her lead? No, it's no good. I don't think I've got a leader, so it doesn't matter. She's just going to go in. It's only for testing purposes. All we're doing in this run, I'm not even, I don't really care even about the score. I just want to show you whether or not an average team can self sustain before we go into my higher power teams. So the main purpose of the video is can Leech sustain a team instead of life still now? Leech goes on. Um, in terms of this team, we have got buffs which are poison, decrease attack, decrease defense, leech. Um, I don't have a counter attacker, so I need for those to continuously get laid up. Counter attack champions will make this happen a lot easier. Ally attack champions will also help you sustain. That's why I've got Captain Counter in here. He is a fantastic epic if you do not have a counter attack champion. He will enable your, your team to go more often and uh, get those debuffs away debuffs away and heals away from the leech really important guys so you can see here we're chunking out pretty good damage per turn that's something that we can now keep an eye on we're going to keep a, a more serious eye on that when i get to my ultra nightmare team because that's important for me the more damage you can get out bef before turn 20 when the clan boss starts to go insanely strong the better you're going to do so we're pushing up. You can see here at this stage, everything's fine. It's bound to be well early on. I'm going to cut back in when the, the clan boss is starting to do some damage. Right, so we're coming into that turn 20. So this is where the clan boss starts to really hit hard. Uh, we've kept debuffs up, no problem, right the way along. Leech is staying up for three turns, two or three turns all the time because we've got speed. We're rotating that round. We're getting hit hard now. Look at this, half health. And in her ally attack and normal attack, she's healed back up to full. Any time... We get a War Master or Giant Slayer proc. Same as with Life Steal, you will heal 100% of your life to full. Unless you've got some crazy high HP champ. But look at this. We're absolutely sustaining ourselves through this fight right the way along. Um, and that's what you need. So that's what Life Steal does for you. That is also what Leech is going to do for you. You kind of need to get your War Master procs in for that to have massive effect. Same as with life steal though, you won't heal to full with life steal unless you have got a war master proc or something coming in. Um, so we don't have leech on right now, which is affecting the, the healing. See that leech has gone back on, everyone starts healing back up to full. So we're going to be in for a decent run here. This isn't my crazy team or anything, this is literally a bunch of rares. But every time we get a decent hit in with a war master proc or something, we heal 100% to full. Same as you would do with Lifesteal gear on. What's interesting for me, and we was on stream last night, and we had a blast actually on stream last night with uh, Twitch, is when we started to look at high-end teams, like my team is, my high-end team hit hard, yeah? My high-end team, I've pushed them into damage gear because, because of this. So we've gone full damage, and because of that, I'm able to self-sustain even without Warmaster props. And we're going to see that once this run is over. But we're still getting into you know the realms of kind of 30 odd turns. Um, you saw the gear, guys. You saw the level of gear that I'm using here. You saw um, the champions, obviously. So, you know, it's, it's a pretty solid run for Brutal. And we're still self-sustaining right the way up. 
pretty much. So we got we didn't get a Warmaster prop there, so she's going to drop. But to get to 30 turns on Brutal with this team is decent. It's decent. All these guys full health. So do not sit on your elite champions anymore. They will add value to your team. We're going to come in here. It's probably bigger, bigger key than I was expecting, actually. I guess a good rule of thumb is if you are dying because of the slams like this, then then you're dying at the right time. If you're dying because of the AOE hits, then you probably don't have enough defense in your team. So there we go, almost full health again, getting back to the clan boss's turn. At that point we're dead, 24 million, we just can't sustain the damage anymore. But that's a decent, brutal key. Um, that's a top chest key with, quite frankly, um, not a top chest key team, apart from a shield now. So let's get into then what we're gonna do for Ultra Nightmare. So I'll show you my team here. I've got two teams, an auto team and a manual team. I'm gonna show you the manual team first. This is where I got my personal best key ever yesterday. So we've got Warlord in two piece immortal, two piece speed. This is a speed comp with a counter attack champion in it. It's not a counter speed tuned comp, okay? So we've gone, Warmaster and the right sort of master is for a Warlord to do as much healing as possible and get his abilities back as soon as possible. We have got, and he's all about his A1 guys. So A1 extends debuffs, but nowhere near to the level of a Vizier. You can only really use Warlord as your extender if, if he's the best you've got, to be fair, or if you have got a fast team that's allowing him to use his A1 a lot. Definitely helps to have an ally attack champion as well because he gets those extra chances to land his A1, which extends debuffs. So he's got his A1 ability here. He's got his A2, which also gives us a big shield and block debuffs. This could be pretty clutch to make you last longer into the game. Bearing in mind, we don't have as much defense as we normally have in speed tuning. So I've gone defense percentage here, defense percentage here, speed here, and then we've gone defense, HP, accuracy. So it gets us to a place where we've got a good level of, of defense and HP. HP is what his shield um, scales off. Defense is going to keep him alive. Good speed and good accuracy for the extensions. We have got ourselves... Next in the line is Lanarkist, the Chosen. So Lanarkist is our ally attack champion. She's got this attack with three champions and boost their turn meter. Really good for a speed team. Uh, same as like a long beard would be very good champions for speed teams. She also brings increased crit rate and crit and increased attack. Most of my champions in this setup are going to be attack based, uh, and she has got crit damage on the gloves, crit rate and speed here, defense percentage. We did all this build live on Twitch. I tell you what, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot quicker with the artifact sorter. But if I show you my silver reserves, I have spent everything I got to get to this build. Defense here. Crit damage here. If your crit rate's decent, you might as well get some crit damage off. And defense here. One thing she also does is extends the duration of allied buffs. Really important in this setup. So she's number two. Draco coming in as number three. Full savage and cruel gear. He's in there to hit hard, yeah? We're doing hard and fast, not, um, not slow and let the poisons do the work. This is hard and fast. Every time he hits with any ability, he's going to heal to full with Leech on. So we've got more damage here for more debuffs, poison, decrease defense and weaken. Masteries, we've gone for this build. I could change it. I didn't want to waste more gems. This is the build I already had. Uh, but Warmaster is the main important one here. And then we've got crit damage on the gloves with speed and crit rate. They're fantastic gloves. Fantastic gloves. Attack percentage on his chest and speed on his boots. I reckon this is the first time I've done an endgame build with somebody with attack percentage on their chest. Um, defense on the ring, defense on the amulet, only because we've got this great crit damage roll here. If we didn't, I would have gone crit damage here and then accuracy here. So we have got a build that gives us 100% when Lanarkis has given us that crit rate boost, 224 crit damage, good attack, good defense, good accuracy. Their HP pulls a bit low, if I'm honest. If I move this to an HP chest, maybe I'll get more damage. I'm not sure. Um, we've then got ourselves a Marta. So Marta gives us our counter attack and increased defense buff. She has got 
healthy defense, great speed. She'll be 100% crit rate with the buff, decent without it, 155 crit damage, 227 accuracy. So again, very strong build. Um, and then we've got Michald, who I showed you already, stalwart gear, crit damage on the gloves, HP on the chest, speed on the boots. And then we go defense, crit damage, accuracy. So this is my manual team. I'm going to show you in action on Ultra Nightmare. This is what I got my PB live on, on Twitch. So there's another 500 odd people that can verify that um, they saw me do it right the way end to end. And we had Marta as the lead, Michelle here, like this, like this, like this, and then Warlord. This is the setup. And we go fully manual. So I go increase crit rate as soon as I can, get those crits going in. We get the leech out there as soon as we can. See this? And then we go A1, because I don't want to get heal reduction on yet. Uh, put my counter attack up straight away. A1 pretty much all the time with Warlord until we get ourselves, um, until we need that shield, sorry, until we need the shield. Decrease defense is on. The biggest danger with this, why, th why this can't be a very reliable auto team is because decrease attack is only going on through Marta and I need Warlord to extend it. If decrease attack, which just gone on here, falls off on this team, we wipe, okay? Which is why I cannot rely on Warlord extending that debuff. I can't rely on it. Great thing about Mashald as well is that he also can steal the clan boss buff if the buff if the clan boss changes affinity. Mashald is all of a sudden my favourite champion in this game. I absolutely love him in all areas of the game. He's insane. So you see here I'm doing massive hits, 170k. This team will heal up through leech all the time. All the time. Absolutely no problem. What I'm doing here as well, just be aware of it, is I am using Warlord's A1 all the time to try and boost debuffs until I need him to start to block this um, stun. I don't need him to do this right now. It's actually fine for me to get that stun. I'd rather we just try and extend these debuffs up, extend them up until we get to a point where I can actually be confident that they're not going to be dropping off. So you see this, if I was going manual, uh, sorry, auto right now, Warlord would have done his A3, his A2, before he does his A1. So I would have had way less A1 hits. Um, anyway, I'm gonna run this through. I'm gonna get us towards the back end. Just be aware of this, turn to damage ratio. I want this to push up to at least 1.5 by the end of the run. Um, I'm gonna show you the results, guys. Um, I'll, I'll show you towards the end of the fight where it gets a bit more hairy. It's actually a really good time to cut back in. So we've done 22 turns, the clan boss has absolutely been getting annihilated here 35 million 22 turns in 11 minutes on manual um, now at this stage if this was auto right now decrease attack is not on Marta would put counter attack up right now I have to land decrease attack or we wipe so I've landed that decrease attack now I want to get I think I want to get poisons on here just to get that damage going and at this stage for the second AoE I also need to start using Warlord's big shield if I don't use that shield, again, we take a hell of damage, loads of damage. So, you know, bear that in mind. For this sort of team to work, you have to be thinking about what you're doing. Again, we're in sort of danger territory because he's not landed an extension. Anytime we miss the extensions, there's a good chance we could wipe in the following turn. So, we're getting a lot of damage in per turn, yes, uh, but it's, it's kind of fraught with risk. Please extend. We got it. Okay, so... You know, if you're if you're having to say please extend every time you want someone to do something, then we're probably in trouble. Um, four or five, so we can't do any more here. So I think we're probably going to get another few million out of this comp at least. But we, it does rely on these extensions or a more secure decrease attack champion, which is what we're going to see in the second comp. Uh, but you see here, we're kind of just about holding our own on keeping this going. But it's insane damage level, guys. You know. It's, it's very high damage team against the hardest clan boss in the game, obviously. See this, we've got 
We've got all of those. Uh, let me just see if I can reapply. I cannot yet. So I'm going to save it. All of those counterattacks there basically got us back to full. We're on that second big hit again. So I, even though I want to extend these debuffs, I have to play shield. That's why that's why manual can be so important here because you're making conscious decisions about what you should do next. Sometimes, guys, you probably, I don't know if you agree with me or not, sometimes it's more fun to manual this thing. Yeah, sometimes it's actually good fun to, to come to the challenge. Don't always just hit auto because you want to speed it through. Sometimes it's fun <laughs> to try and challenge yourself to do more damage than you normally do. Find ways to beat it. Decrease attack has to land. If it doesn't land, we wipe. We've cracked 40 million here, which is a pretty decent feat as itself. Before I did this, this setup, I think my best was something like 40.5 million. So I've already beaten my other personal best before last night. So we're on good good form here to keep this, this kind of run going. But as you can see, we're starting to take some pretty hefty hits. I don't have a natural healer, so her being stunned up there is dangerous for me. I need to keep my speed up. I need to keep everyone else healthy. We're probably going to start losing people. We might lose Marta right now. See, this is now a really tough one. I probably could lose Marta here because she's... I don't think she's going to get a turn in time. So if I place my shield here, I keep Marta alive, okay? Keep Marta alive for a definite another turn. But it also means that when we come around to the next turn, I won't have this shield off cooldown. Three turns. I'm not going to do three turns in that amount of time. So this is now danger territory. I don't even know what to do. I think I'm just going to ride it through and use the shield on the next one because I think the next one could wipe several people instead of just one will Marta get a turn get a turn Marta no oh my free I should have used the shield oh that was a mistake that was a mistake right there so this is not going to be in the realms of what I did last night I'll ping up once this finishes though an image of last night's hit uh, so you can see it this is still going to be a nice hit but it's not going to be anywhere near what we did last night. And that's it, making conscious decisions like that. I've literally just cost me probably, I don't know, another few million maybe. So he's now getting wiped out. As long as we keep decrease attack and leech on, we've got a chance to keep this going for a little bit longer. But it's not going to be too much more. That is going to be that. I'll show you now a quick screen of what happened last night. So we did 44.86 here, fully manual. Um, last night, last night, let's just find it quick. So this is the hit from last night. 50, 54.17 million, same lineup, same gear. Um, that was my, my new PB for this setup. So you can see the kind of damage, um, damage changes here just in doing it manually. Last one I'm going to show you for this video. I know this video is kind of stretched on a bit, but I think it's important to show. What do I do then to make this a manual, uh, sorry, a fully auto team? The main thing that I needed was more consistency with decrease attack. And I've got the best decrease attack champion in the game. Sitting right here, Ultan. So Ultan's going to come in. He's in lifesteal gear, guys. Not because I need lifesteal, just because it's good gear. Yeah, I had really good rolls on some of this lifesteal gear. And I thought, well, why don't I just use it on somebody? So he's in lifesteal gear. I also brought in, instead of Marta, Skull Crusher. Skull Crusher then becomes better than Marta in the auto comp because he's able to do that shared damage. I lose my Warlord shield, okay? Warlord was doing a lot of work for me to keep people alive. So I'm thinking, who else to come in that's going to enable me to keep up my damage levels but to also keep my team alive where I don't have that Warlord shield and Skull Crusher is the answer to that. So what we're going to do now is just run in with the same team apart from we're switching out. We're going to switch out Marta uh, for Ultan. Ultan's going to go in as the lead and we're going to switch out Warlord for Skull Crusher. And Skull Crusher is going to come in as the team protector. So he does that ally protection and unkillable just means I will get to go further into the fight. And this one's going to be fully auto, start to finish. And you'll see, I could probably tweak some of this stuff early on. You know, I should get 
I should get the speed boost on and some of the buffs on before Lanarkis does the extension right at the start there. But other than that, I, look, I'm not. I, I was just testing. We're, we're testing. This isn't fine tuned. This is just testing stuff. Um, but if you'd seen on my on my record hit, I'll just ping it up again. This was 34 turns. So we did 54 million in 34 turns. That is a very high damage per turn ratio. Anyway, I'm going to let this run fully auto. You can see here we're getting our decreased attack on. We've still got decreased defense and weaken coming on from the Draco. He's then filling the rest of it up with poison. We do get debuffs we don't want, like the heal reduction on auto, but it is what it is. Um, and we're going fast enough that if we get any resists, like we are right now, we'll get them back up again by the time we need them. So I'll let this run. I'll show you the results um, towards the end again. So you can see here, we are coming to the danger zone again. Turn 25, we know we're taking big hits. We're still healing to full with just Leech on. Uh, we do have a couple of people in Lifestyle Gear, not because I need it, it's just because it's good gear, guys. We're starting to get one shot here. Um, probably need a bit more defense on that Lanarkis, I think. But yeah, 35, 33, 34 million. Debuffs are staying up, Leech is staying up. You'll see here, look, this is what Skull Crusher brings. He absolutely just soaks up damage. Pretty bad example, so it was a slam. But his his shared damage just enables us to go long into the fight, much longer than if we had Marta in the mix. Um, but see there, we're basically about to wipe. But is this a, a solid two key? Yes, it will be. Um, 35 million full auto. Yesterday we did about 40 million full auto. So there's a kind of pretty pretty much a barrier there, one to the other. But the great thing for me is. Leech can replace lifesteal, which means that you can absolutely start to change up your team comps. Other champions become viable in the clan boss. Foley all of a sudden feels like it's definitely worth a look at. Um, yeah, look guys, just take it as a, a good test for you guys to test some different stuff out. I had tons of fun doing this in the stream last night. Um, and yeah, I'm definitely going to be looking at some of these other champions now with Leech on and seeing if they can be viable for you to use in Clan Boss. Um, let me know your thoughts below. Uh, come and join me on stream tonight if you're around. I've been Hell Hades. I'll catch you all soon.